Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Second Shelf. New month, new books. It's time for the February TBR. And for those of you who might not be familiar with my videos, TBR for the purpose of this video means to be released, uh, which means at the beginning of each month or the end of the previous month, I look at the upcoming new releases and then I pick a couple that I personally uh, find interesting. I haven't read any of the books, so it's just my first impression. I pick the books and then I present them to you. And as always, we start out with general fiction, and I have two books in this category. And the first one is Jenny Offel's new novel, Weather, which will be published on the 11th of February. Jenny Offel is an American author, and I picked her new release as one of my looking forward to releases because I really, really enjoyed her previous book, Department of Speculation. This one, Weather, is about Lizzie Benson, um, a librarian, but also sort of a part-time shrink in the sense that she um, is tending to her mother and uh, her brother who used to be an addict. Uh, but her life uh, changes when she is asked by um, a, a very famous podcast host uh, to answer the emails that this host uh, gets. And that's about, you know, climate change and really polarizing males of, about various issues, topical current political issues. And then Lizzie starts this new job answering the emails and the story takes off from there. That's all I know about the book, um, but like I said, I, I really liked uh, Department of Speculation, which was about a failing marriage. I liked the, the writing style a lot, but also the way that uh, Jenny Offill addresses problems. So I expect a lot from this book, which might not be a good thing because sometimes then you are disappointed. But I thought the topic was interesting, you know, um, how you engage uh, with people who have a really strong opinion uh, about things like climate change um, or, or something like that. So I, I was interested not only because of the author, but also because the topic of the book really spoke to me. So Jenny Offel's new novel, Weather, made the TBR in the category general fiction. And as I said, there's a second book in this category, uh, and that's Evie Wilde's new novel, The Bass Rock, which will be published on the 13th of February. And the same with Jenny Offel. I absolutely loved Evie Wilde's previous book, All the Birds Singing. So that already captured me. Her new novel is uh, um, uh, quite different, I, I think, from what I read. It's set in Scotland. By the way, Evie Wilde is, was born in London. She's called an Anglo-Australian author. So she has obviously some Australian blood in her. Um, but anyway, the book, the new book, The Bass Rock, is set in Scotland um, in three time uh, lines, the 1720s and then after World War II and then in the present day. In the 1720s, we have this haunted house idea, this witch who is transported to the coast to this house. And then in the Second World War, we have Ruth, who becomes the second wife of a widower and the stepmother to um, his sons in, I assume, the same house that the 1720 uh, protagonist lived in. And then we are uh, in the present day when uh, another woman, Viv, uh, goes or sorts through the belongings of her grandmother, I suppose that's Ruth. So we have the story of three women uh, from the 1720s uh, to the present day. So let's say roughly 300 years of history um, um, that sort of binds them together, things that bind them together. And I know that Evie Wilde from her previous book, uh, All the Birds Singing, is really good in unusual timelines, let's let's put it like that, because um, All the Birds Singing was told backwards. So we start in the present and then we get um, 10 years back and 10 years back. And I, I talked about this book a, a, a million times and I said that this is a very, very difficult structure to handle because you, when you are in a certain timeline, you don't want to tell too much so that 
if you go back 10 years, it's not interesting anymore. And Evie Wilde did a perfect, perfect job with that book. If you have never read um, All the Birds Singing, I can certainly recommend it. So I also thought the writing was really good. Again, if you loved a previous book by an author, the expectations are always very high and you might be disappointed. But no matter, I, I want to try out this new one and the idea of uh, the lives of three women uh, over the co course, course, not cause, course of 300 years really interests me. And Scotland, you know, and the idea of the witch and the haunted, haunted house. And I don't think that Evie Wilde is an author who will make this, you know, like a haunted house typical story. But there was magical realism in her previous book. So I expect some magical realism, um, fantasy-like elements uh, in this book as well. And I'm really looking forward to it. Next up in the February to be released books I'm looking forward to is nonfiction. And I picked a true crime because I love a, a true crime book. And that's uh, the book by Sierra Crane Murdoch, um, Yellowbird. Um, will be published towards the end of the month on the 25th. Uh, Sierra Crane Murdoch is an American journalist um, and she writes uh, for The Atlantic and The New Yorker. And this is a true crime book, as I said, um, following um, uh, Lisa Yellow Bird, um, an Indian woman in North Dakota who in 2009 returns from home from prison uh, to discover that the Indian reservation where she lives has changed quite a bit because oil has been found. Um, and then uh, a white uh, worker, uh, oil worker on this uh, oil site uh, disappears, Christopher Clark, and Lisa Yellowbird gets obsessed to finding out what happened to him. And the, the book um, tells this story of this search, as it says in the subtitle, um, uh, the search of a woman uh, for justice um, uh, of this, my God, I should try to make a whole sentence. So it's a search of this woman for justice um, after the disappearance of this man in the reservation. And what I, what I understood from the blurb, um, it also tells something about this, um, uh, the tension between the newfound wealth because of the oil in this uh, native reservation land, in this tribal land, um, and the oil workers, uh, the white uh, oil workers who uh, come there uh, to work, who are not uh, participating in, in that wealth. And then when one disappears, you know, who cares? Um, and uh, if you're following my channel, you know that I also read... Um, uh, Louise Edricks, Louise Edricks books. She is a Native American author because I want to learn more and know, know more about um, uh, Native American lives. So when I saw this book, it automatically, immediately made the February TBR. Next up is crime of sorts, um, because you might be surprised uh, by the author. It's Emily St. John Mandel's new book, uh, The Glass Hotel, which will be published um, uh, mid-February as an ebook for those of us who can't wait, because uh, the hardcover uh, editions, um, you will have to wait until the end of March. But for me, the ebook counts. First publication always counts. That's why it's in the February TBR. Now, Emily St. John Mandel is a Canadian author, and I don't think she needs an introduction because her previous book, Station Eleven, was an absolute bestseller. I have to say I liked Station Eleven, but I didn't love it as much as a lot of people did. But still, I thought the author had potential, so I was looking forward to her next one. And The Glass Hotel is not sci-fi. Station Eleven, for those of you who might not have read it, it was a sci-fi novel. But The Glass Hotel, uh, that's why it's in the category crime, is, a, is about white-collar crime, Ponzi schemes, things like that. Uh, the main protagonist is Vincent. And from what I understood, that is a woman. She works as a bartender in this 
very fancy glass hotel uh, on an island off the coast of Canada and then she meets the owner of the hotel and they start a life together and um, 15 years later or something uh, Vincent disappears from uh, a ship uh, and then you also have a half-brother, Vincent's half-brother, Paul, who leaves a mysterious note uh, that gets people all rattled. It sounds mysterious. Uh, it sounds complicated, but it also sounds really interesting. And as I said, even though I didn't love Station Eleven, uh, I still thought um, Emily St. John Mandel is a good writer, so I want to try her next book, and especially if it's more of a crime uh, uh, thing and the, the fact that it's white-collar crime, um, but also something with a Ponzi scheme, I think that's very topical. Um, and she can certainly write a good story. So uh, for those of you, like I said, who can't wait, the ebook is uh, published on the 15th of uh, this month, uh, but the hardcover and paperback editions, uh, 24th of March. And as always, we end the TBR with sci-fi. And this time I picked a translated um, book, um, and that is Agustina Basterica, Tender is the Flesh, which will be published tomorrow on the 6th of February. And the, it has been translated from the Spanish by Sarah Moses, originally published in Spanish in 2017. Agustina Basterica is, was born in 1974 in Buenos Aires, so she is an Argentinian author, and I haven't, have never read her. I don't even know whether any of her previous books have been translated into English. I didn't check. Sorry about that. Um, but this one really grabbed me from the premise. Um, you have this dystopian world, uh, and there is the familiar theme of a virus, but this time the virus that didn't affect human beings, but all other animals and their meat, their flesh became poisonous. So the government decided uh, to announce a sort of transitional period in which the consumption of human meat, human flesh, uh, was allowed. So that's the premise. That's potentially quite gross, to be honest, but it's also different. I've never seen a premise in a sci-fi book quite like this. So that that uh, drew me in. And the story then, based on this premise, the story follows Marcos, who is in the business of killing human beings in order for their meat, their flesh, to be processed. Um, and uh, one day he is he gets a special delivery, a young woman, because their flesh is especially tender and I would suspect expensive. Uh, so he stashes uh, the woman in the barn, um, uh, planning on killing her, but that turns out to be difficult. And then the story takes off from there. Like I said, potentially the, the premise at least is, is quite uh, gross, um, but the idea of, you know, our meat consumption and what would we do if uh, there wouldn't be any uh, non-human animal meat anymore, I thought that was really compelling and interesting. And if you're following me, you know that in 2020 I want to make a, a special effort more than in, in previous years of reading translated works. Uh, also in various categories, so not only general fiction, but also like crime or, in this case, sci-fi. So despite the sort of mm, slight uh, shivers of, <laughs> of uh, anxiousness that I have about the premise, I'm really looking forward uh, to this book. These were my picks for the February to be released new books. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments whether any of the books I picked interest you or whether there are new releases in February that you specifically uh, look forward to. And I'll talk to you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.